Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and this is part two of how to texture a simple object in Maya. The second part of the tutorial is to use Photoshop so we can make photorealistic textures so that your object looks unique. This will be a tips and tricks. I'll be showing a lot of shortcuts and let's get started. Let's go ahead and go back to Photoshop and let's fix this a little bit. Let's go to layer two and do a so control E will actually merge the top layer to the bottom layer. I've been using Photoshop for a long time, so you're going to hear me use a lot of shortcuts. So I'm going to be, you know, telling you control E, control A, control C, you know, all that stuff. So remember shortcuts save you time, time saving times equals saving money. Companies love that. So it's all about being efficient, efficient. Okay. So now that I have that set up, let's go ahead and just fix it a little bit. Um, I want to kind of remove some of these elements, especially this stain here that makes it look like it's in fact a repeating texture, which we're trying to avoid. And there's several ways we can do this. One of them is the spot healing brush tool over here on the left. And what you can do is just kind of paint it and then it will try to get rid of it for you, which is pretty cool. Um, it can blur your pixels a little bit. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Another tool that you can use is the healing brush tool, which basically is it's similar to the stamp tool where you actually get a stamp and then you start painting a section and then it will actually find a difference. That was a bad one, not a good example. So let me stamp another place. So alt click on where you want to use and then start painting. And you can see that it kind of helps diversify the piece a little bit. Maybe put some of these um, again, alt click here. That's where the target is and then paint somewhere else and it looks like it's unique. And another one is called the patch tool. This one's kind of interesting as well. You can actually get a section here like so click and drag it somewhere else, let go and it will actually pick up the texture information. So let's go somewhere else. Let's go maybe over here and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't again, welcome to Photoshop. So let's grab this guy here. That's a little too repeating for me. I'm going to go somewhere else, maybe over here. That didn't work. Control Z to undo. Whoops. Control zero to zoom in or just zoom. All right, where was I? Healing brush, go way up a little bit. That's nicer. And you just kind of go along and do that. Just kind of look for repeating textures and then you just try to uh, fix it and, and make it a little bit more unique. The more unique it looks, the better it's going to appear. It's, uh, the human eye is incredible when it comes to seeing patterns. All right, I'm going to duplicate this layer two and then drag it down. Okay. And then again, you can actually hold on alt click and drag and that will actually duplicate the layer. Again, I'm going to be showing you a lot of shortcuts. Um, you can see that there's a little bit of a, I can see the red behind that. So I'm going to have to fix that by creating a background and just filling it up with black shift backspace. You want to select um, foreground I click. Okay. And it fills it. Click the right one. Alt click and drag. There we go. I'm going to move this to the right. Like that, maybe more like this. I'm going to expand it so it goes beyond the border just a little bit. But when I want to keep the nails, I'm going to try to keep the nails. Move this a little bit to the right with the keyboard, right keyboard. Alt, drag. Alt, drag. Maybe make sure the nails are popping up in the back. So again, control T to scale and then enter when you're done. T scale and then enter when you're done. There we go. All right. I'm going to save this. Control. Okay. So if I get an error like this, could not save because it's being used. Um, I just do a control S control shift S or file save as, and then I'm do a color too. And then I just switch them back and forth. All right. Go back to Maya, Maya, go to my crate barrel and I just need to reload the texture. So again, there's my color. There's a little output, click on the little output and then click on reload. But it didn't reload because I didn't save over this. So I'm going to click on my little folder, choose color two, 
And there you go. All right, it's coming along. Going back to Photoshop. Let's save as actually. File, save as. Notice where it places it. Again, this is the reason why we create projects instead of projects is because of create scenes. This is where Maya looks for it. So this is gonna be my crate version one. All right, so now that we have the basics, let's go ahead and make this a little bit more unique. So what I wanna do is actually uh, make it look like this is uh, something fragile in it, for example. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways we can actually make this a little bit more unique. We still have these repeating textures, which can be a problem, but we can kind of fool uh, we can actually make this unique by changing aspects of it. So the first thing though, I want to merge everything. Let's say I'm happy with everything. Um, I'm going to do a control E, select a bunch of layers and do a control E. This is a permanent change. So just make sure that you are ready to go. The second thing is I'm going to go ahead and put like a fragile texture on there. So I'm going to choose my text and I'm going to type in fragile, control T again, hold down shift, maybe rotate it a little bit. I'm going to um, paint it, whoops, apply. I'm gonna choose the color red, like blood red, scary red, whatever you like. And it just looks too pretty. Have you ever seen anything that looks that pretty? So I'm going to leave it here fragile as is. I'm gonna duplicate the text. I wanna keep the original somewhere where I can edit it. And in here, in the fragile copy, I'm going to right click on it and then go to rasterize type. What rasterize means is that now this is no longer, no longer editable in text mode. It's actually now like a texture, it's just an image. And now I can manipulate it. So the things that I can do with it is actually make it look a little bit worn. And by that, I mean is that I can actually, I can make it look a little bit more um, burnt and uh, you can't make the text look so perfect. It has to be old or uh, unworn. So I can make a, a couple areas brighter, for example. So I'm using the dodge tool, which makes it brighter, or I can make, I can burn it, which means that I can make it darker in certain areas. We have so many brushes provided by uh, Photoshop that you can just use those to kind of help uh, give it texture as well. And just have fun with it. There's so much stuff in here. It's, it's Photoshop really just, it's an incredible tool to be honest. Okay, now that it's a little bit worn out, we still wanna go ahead and kind of like erase some of it. We wanna make it look like it's been exposed to the elements. So. There's several ways you can do this. You can grab the erase tool and start erasing, you know, using a texture brush. If you want to, you can just kind of grab that and just kind of, you know, start getting rid of it. But what if you made a mistake or what if you're working for someone, they're like, I can't really read the G. Can you bring that back a little bit more? And you're, you can't because you've destroyed it. You've actually permanently removed it. So instead we're going to use a mask. So select your fragile, um, I'm going to call this fragile rasterize or ras. That means ras rasterized and we're going to use what's called a mask a mask is basically a black and white image and white stands for can see it and black means you can't see it so right now you can see it and you use paint you use color so i can grab my color my black color brush grab a um a regular brush and just to demonstrate i'm just going to erase this the opacity is at a change the opacity back to 100 and you can see that it looks like I'm erasing it but if I go back to white I can paint it back on and this is great this is great for photography this is great for everything that means that if you want to kind of destroy something or manipulate it in a way you can actually um, erase what looks like it's being erased but it's just being masked and that's really helpful so that that being said we're going to go ahead and grab a black paint we're going to grab a texture brush and we're just going to start eating away at the texture. Now this is pretty extreme, right? So if you want to do kind of a little bit more faded, you can use gray. Gray is, will bring some of it back or some of it will start fading away, but not all the way. So again, you can just kind of grab some brushes 
and you can bring some of it back by changing it more white so if you feel like I think fragile just kind of disappeared I can't read the F then you can do that all right let's zoom out and now fragile looks nice and dirty this is what it looked like before nice and pretty this is what it looked like now dirty and kind of faded um, it helps if you use another mode you know try try them out you can go to darken um, you can try different modes and you can see I'm just clicking down my up and down arrow in my keyboard and you can see the different modes and how what effect it has so it's up to you which one you want to use and which one you feel uh, fits the best for your scene right so let's see um, darker color looks good multiply looks pretty good darken looks good dissolve looks terrible um, I might actually go to darker color or multiply and a lot of people like to use um, overlay oh, that's not good let's see let's go for a darker color so again these are all just Photoshop tricks that you can try and it doesn't end there you can actually duplicate this layer by dragging it down to create a new layer and you can move it you can actually take this copy somewhere else maybe rotate it a little bit so it's not exactly like you know maybe whoever put in fragile it's just not doing a very good job maybe skew it a little bit and again it comes when you duplicate a layer it comes with an alpha map so that means that I can go in with my brush make sure you select your, ma um, your mask and you just kind of paint in some of it and make it unique in a different way so I can go ahead and change it back to black dark gray and just get rid of some of this Strokes. All right, cool. Let's take a look. Save. Go to Maya. Go to our texture, Lambert. Right here. Click Reload. There it is. Fragile. Okay, you can basically go and keep working on it. You can add more elements, you can add rust, you can do all sorts of stuff. That's a little bit more advanced. But the point of this tutorial was to just get you guys to kind of understand how to capture a UV snapshot and how to bring it into Photoshop so you can texture it and then bring it back into Maya so you can use it. All right, so let's say the director likes it, you're very happy with it. We need to remember to remove the UV snap. So make sure you hide it. Okay, so this is the, the final image. I'm saving the PSD and I'm ready to put it in my source images. Go to layer, flatten image, click OK. File save as or for the shortcut, control shift a S. And I'm going to place this in my source images. This is going to be my crate color. And I'm going to save it as a TIFF. It's up to you, TIFF and Targas. You know, you can talk about it until you're blue in the face. Save it. Make sure the image compression is none. Click OK. And we're going to go to our image name again. Click on the little folder. Go to our source images where I will find my TIFF. And there you go. Render. Go to render again. All right. Let's create a uh, surface. So this is actually sitting somewhere. We can actually duplicate this guy and move it around. Duplicate it again and maybe show off a different end. A little crooked. You always want to make things a little bit skewed, just really dark. Let me create a light really fast. I'm going to put in an ambient light um, and push it in the back so that we can see the light or our objects. Okay, great. So now we can see our objects. We can see our unique textures. Now that's the basics of how to create a um, your unique textures however this is where the challenge comes in let's say that um, I'm duplicating this and I actually don't want just square or cube crates I want a long one and notice what happens that the textures start to get stretched and that's where the second part of texturing in Maya comes in which is called UV mapping you actually have to you 
create UV maps that fit this or new shape of a model. So if I take a look at my Windows UV Texture Editor, you can see that it still has the same texture as a square, but it doesn't take into account the fact that this is no longer a square, this is a rectangle. And the faces, especially this face here, which is right here, um, is no longer a square, it's actually a rent rectangle. And what that means is that we're gonna have to go in and actually UV map this ourselves so that it has a unique UV map just for this object. And then we can do the same thing, texture it and then create its own texture for it. But that is for another tutorial. I hope that was helpful. I will see you next time.